in the cafeteria, they just had a sign that said ten dollars an hour. I literally just put an application right then. I didn't know what I what I was hired for until I, my first day of working. Welcome to the Troy Kearns Podcast. We talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. Today, I've got a very special guest from Philadelphia, Derek Boone. Welcome to the podcast. Excited to have you on here, man. No, thank you for having me, man. This is awesome. Yeah, you know, the first time I went to Philadelphia was in 2005 on a stopover um, to Europe. And since that day, like, we, we had, like, five hours, um, and we had, like, just... Hit the hit like Jim's cheesecake. Hit all the places, and then like uh, eleven years later, I would end up buying a property there. I've been to a couple Eagles games there because my former assistant was a diehard Eagles fan. I know that you probably are too. Most people from Philadelphia are, so um, I'm excited to have you on the show and hear about like what your business is all about, who you're all about. Tell us a little bit about your story, Derek. You, you know what's funny? I'm actually not a diehard Eagles fan. Whoa. This is this is probably piss a lot of people off i'm yeah. not as big into football uh like i used to be yeah. um through just being in entrepreneurship and then also um i was a big football fan because my grandpa he passed away so i, I kind of just stopped watching as much but it's funny i'm a new england patriots fan oh wow. and back, i don't know how many years i might have been seven years old or something like that i, I was super young and uh, me and my grandfather, we made a bet that if it was the Eagles versus New England, I forgot what game was it was, but um, it was a bet that if the New England wins, he'll make me waffles in the morning. And if he, and if and if Eagles win, I got to wash his car in the morning. New England won. I've been a fan ever since. I was probably like seven years old. I've been a fan ever since. That's the most interesting story I heard about somebody becoming a fan. I know it always starts with your young. Literally, I have been. Well, listen, man, they're not doing that well this year, so maybe it's time for you to go back because the Eagles are cru the Eagles are crushing it. Like uh, yeah. Brady's out, the the Patriots have reigned. I mean, I'm sure it's been the best the best fandom that you could possibly have for like the last 15 years. I mean, you had Tom Brady won a bunch of Super Bowls, shine the light on uh, New England for like the last 15 years, and now we're kind of seeing like what was better, Tom Brady or Bill Belichick, and I think the score's been settled. It was Tom Brady. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's cool though, man. So um, Derek, tell me how you got started into uh, wholesaling real estate. Uh, so, so, um, it actually happened by not by accident, but kind of just but I always tell people you can network, you can really network your way to being rich if you execute with the networking. So um how I started out was back in 2017, I started out as a real estate agent. So in 2016, I was working at a retirement home. I was making ten dollars an hour there. And then okay, I was man. Yeah. <laughs> then I um it's funny because I got that job. I went to Penn State Edmonton. I didn't finish, but they had in the cafeteria, they just had a sign that said ten dollars an hour. I literally just put an application right then. I didn't know what I what I was hired for until I, my first day of working. And it and I worked in dietary, so I just had to serve elderly. I didn't know, I literally did not know what I was hired for. So um fast forward, um, I went to this class, a home buying seminar, how to be like a real estate investing home buying seminar, like how to buy multifamily, like a duplex, a triplex. Was this like real a free se was it a free seminar? Yeah, it was a, it was really a home buying seminar. Like the guy, the real estate agent there, his name was Anthony. He was trying to like recruit leads, he was trying to get more buyers for you know for his business. And then right. we just started talking, and then but I was already researching stuff. So he I remember like just said, he said, like, you kind of know some stuff. I was like, Yeah, I've been researching. He said, No, nah, like. You got like a good person. I'm like, yeah, thank you. I'm like, yo, you beating around the bush. And he said, no, nah, I think you should give this a shot. I said, that's what I'm here for. So I can learn how to buy a house. And he said, no, nah, I think you should give this side a shot. Fast forward, long story short, um, I went and took the classes. Um, I literally failed the test eight times. I passed on a ninth time. Um, and then wow. I got my license. Yeah, I got my license March 2017. I closed my first deal April 2017. It was like a two thousand dollar check. It was a small house, you know. You get three percent or whatever. But I yeah. was um I partnered with somebody, so I got I had to split that on top yeah. of splitting with the uh with the brokerage. It was like two thousand dollars. But when I tell you that was the best money I've ever made because it was a proof of kind of like yo this works. Fast forward from March, from that April all the way to December 2017, I closed like nineteen or twenty deals. 
Um, which is super impressive if people don't know. Like most agents don't close nothing their first year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's kind of how the education thing kind of started out because the next year I want to close double that. So my office, my office, um, and then that's when I hired agents under me and then we tripled up. We just was going crazy in my office was like, can you come teach, teach the office? How are you doing this stuff? Cause right. I was only 20, I was like 23, 24. Cause yeah, I'm 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were trying to figure out how the hell are you doing this? So that's kind of how the whole education thing started. Cause I was teaching in my office and then it kind of just went online and stuff like that. But um, well, how, how were you having such uh, massive amounts of success at, at number one, so young and number two, so early on uh, to just getting your license? Uh, two things, one relationships. And then the second thing is understanding who's your target audience. So I realized that in the beginning, I was dealing with a lot of buyers because a lot of sellers didn't trust me because I was young, 23, right. like somebody 40, 50 years old. Selling, they was like, they don't trust me. So I understood who my audience was and it was, it was, um, it was buyers. So I targeted buyers, but it was more so, um, individuals so i was if for the craziest reason i was targeting a lot of women women that just want to be home buyers or or even if it was a couple the woman that was more so in charge like oh, where God was, whatever she yeah, whatever yeah. she wants are you are you married no not anymore not anymore they're always in charge yeah yeah i know that i know <laughs> that i know that but i had i had some i had some couples i would work with and the man had a lot of say so and those are it never worked out but when i worked with couples where the woman like took full charge so what i did was i used a lot of social media and i would just um start talking about kitchens and bathrooms all the time i'm talking about all the time kitchens and bathrooms, kitchen and bath kitchen so i was just getting an influx of women clients um or not even if they were like single women they were just the couples they hey honey this guy's got this beautiful kitchen we should go check it out and that's kind of how in their relationship was I was I thought about this when you're when you're um when you're about to buy a house, who's the first person you really call? Your your mom or your spouse or your girlfriend or whatever. Or, or, or after that point, majority of people they'll go ahead and call uh the mortgage lender, get pre-approved first. Oh, right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sure. I called mortgage lenders and I became close with them. And then now they sent me leads for their clients. Hey, client just got say you just got approved, and then he'll say to you. Oh, I got this great guy, great realtor, you should give him a call. That's your mortgage lender. You're just going to think, okay, let me listen to them. So I would get a lot of leads from the mortgage lender. So between social media, um, the mortgage lenders, and then the third piece, what made the second and third year even more powerful was each client I made them, my main goal is to make you fall in love with me. So the where it's like, yo, this guy is like so genuine, loving. I will pop up a month later after closing, see how the house is going. That I just kept getting so many referrals. I literally referrals on referrals on referrals. So that's pretty much how it, it took off so fast. So customer service, you were just over delivering with the customer service after the sale. So you, yeah. you, you were getting repeat business because you delivered, you attracted the right people because you knew what you were going for and, and all pretty smart. It's pretty, that's pretty intuitive for somebody who's 23 years old to be learning to like know who your audience yeah. is. I mean, I didn't figure that out for much, much longer in my life. So that's, that's pretty smart. So, um, now you've been doing wholesaling now as well, correct? Yeah. So 20, so it was 2017, 2018, 29, the end of 2018, top of 2019. Um, this guy, his name is Tom. He came to my office, right? One of my friends, well, my friend now, but at that time he just came to my office to meet with another agent at my building. And they were trying to do like a partnership deal. He was a wholesaler. Uh, so how my office, they met on a Saturday. So how my office was, you kind of need like a key to let somebody in and let somebody out. Right. So they were like, Hey, you mind walking them to the door? So I'm talking to him in the door. I was like, so explain what do, what do you, what was y'all meeting about? And he said, um, wholesaling. I'm like, so what is that? He said, so basically I middleman properties. And when he middleman's properties, he might make 15, 20, 30 grand. Right. And I said, so how long do you take the close? He said 30 days. I said, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> so you close the deal, it takes 30 days. I close the deal, it takes 30 days. You're walking around in sweatsuits and I got a full blown suit on. When my when my deal closes is an 8,000, 10,000, 7,000, 5,000, maybe $11,000 check. Cause I wasn't selling a million dollar house. The average person isn't selling Ryan Sharon multi-million dollar houses. Selling houses yeah. between 300 and 500,000. Yeah, but you're getting paid. Yeah, you're, but you're getting paid 
30, 20, 20, 15 grand. Like, but you, it just, it blew my mind so much. So me and him locked in and then he taught me everything. And then uh, me and him start partnering together and we just start closing deals. We was, my first deal I ever made was 4,000. I think the whole deal was like 10,000. He took six, I took four. Cause it was, it was his seller, but I knew the buyer. And I right. met this guy. It's so fun. You never know who you um who could be your next business partner. I met the, the, this church called me and asked, can I do a home buying seminar at the church? And then a the guy was there, me and him exchanging numbers, and he told me he buys properties in West Philadelphia. For some reason, when we got the property under contract in West Philly, I just said, you know, let me call this guy because he said he buys houses in West Philly. Calls him. He buys it that same day. Same day, goes out there, sends a deposit check. Easiest four grand I've ever made in my life. And then that's when we just kept doing it ever since then. So we've done deals from ten thousand, four thousand, seventy thousand dollar deals, twenty thousand, all different types of numbers. And then um that's how the wholesaling thing went. And then at some point uh, about twenty twenty, so that full year of wholesaling, I said, you know what? I'm selling off a lot of good deals and I'm making a lot of people rich. And that's when I kind of switched the gears and said, Let me start buying. And then that's really how I went. So this is all in Philadelphia, right? Yeah. That's cool. So before before we got on, I told you I owned a property in, in Philadelphia. I I, yeah, I, yeah. I felt like Philadelphia is a fa- if you, if you're listening right now, Philadelphia is a fantastic market. You got a lot of distressed houses. You got a lot of opportunities. To, a lot of good changing neighborhoods. Neighborhoods that are like good that are becoming better. You got neighborhoods that are bad that are becoming good. And really, a lot of people that are and it's becoming like a technology hub. There's a lot of major companies out of Philadelphia, like Comcast is based there. They've got some really cool downtown. I mean, we stay at the Sofitel downtown. You've got like just really a lot of stuff going on in Philadelphia. So there's a lot of people, big medical fields, everything is a lot of things. And, you know, obviously there's a, his, Philadelphia's got a lot of history. The Eagles were just in the Super Bowl. They lost to the Chiefs. And we know you don't care about that. I, I, I'm happy about that because yeah, uh, I, I saw. I, I realized. I realized. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and you guys got uh, the other Kelsey uh, out there. So, so going from real estate to wholesaling, did you give up your real estate license? No. So I didn't really give up my real estate license until about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. So I always kept it up. And the reason why, and this is some, you know, some game for real estate agents, what I would do. So, you know, in order to make um, a $30,000 commission check, you have to sell like a million dollar house, 3% of that, you make 30 grand. But the average sell, the median sales price in Philadelphia is like between 250 and three. So to really sell a million dollar house is like really rare if you really want to be statistical with it. Um, and even if you watch, watch like million dollar list and those houses don't sell them days on the market are ridiculous. So I thought about this, like, you know what, how can I make that kind of money? You know, while still having a license and different things. So what I would do is I would, let's say you're a, you're a buyer, right? In Philadelphia. Well, technically you are. So I would, I would sell you the house. I would wholesale you the house and make, let's say 15, 20 grand wholesaling it. When you're done, you'll give it back to me to list it. And then I'll make another $10,000 listing it. So I kept my license because I was doing it. I would get the money on the front end and I would get the money on the back end. And I would just keep doing that with investors over and over and over again. So I kept my license for those reasons. Nice. And then eventually you said, uh, I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to go into this thing on my own and I'm getting rid of my license. It's a liability at this point in time. Uh, or so. I got rid of my license. Like I, I just truthful. Um, I sold like 3000 properties. I had it for a long time. I wish I would have transitioned much earlier than you did. I had my license, I hung on to it, like hung on to it, you know? And then when it was time to get rid of it, I got rid of it. Um, and I wish I would have got rid of it before, but I felt like, man, I'm so much in the investing space. I don't need my license anymore. And it's, I have to disclose, you know, everything. You have to disclose, disclose, yeah. disclose. I was so tired of disclosing everything all the time. Yeah, and it's funny, I actually like, and I didn't, I didn't, I got rid of my license kind of by, not by accident, but you know how you got to take continue education. And yeah. when it was time to take, I was like, I don't feel like doing this. You know what? I'm just, <laughs> that's yeah. really how it happened. That's a great reason. That is, that's like, that's I don't, don't feel like doing this. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, just, you don't need to. In fact, 
You know, one thing, and wholesaling, for those guys who don't know, can you explain what wholesaling is for people who maybe don't know what it is? Yeah, so real estate wholesaling, the simplest way to explain is your middle manning property. The more complex way is I find someone that wants to sell a property, a regular motivated homeowner that wants to sell a property. Um, the property may be um, super trash or it might just be a little rough. Um, where it's just room for, you know, some equity is room for some, you know, make some money off of it. And let's say the homeowner wants to sell this property for a hundred thousand dollars, right? The property may really be worth one thirty. I find you, for example, you're a buyer and you're interested in buying properties in the neighborhood. I call you and I, even though I have the property with the homeowner under contract, we signed an agreement for the hundred thousand dollars. I'll pitch it to you for maybe one ten. And the reason why you're buying it for 110, because like I said, it's really worth 130. So you're getting a, a $20,000 off discount. Right. But in my light, once the deal all closes, the $100,000 goes to the homeowner. Then now you're taking ownership of the property and that $10,000 in between gets paid out to me or AKA my company. And then that's how we pretty much no money needed, no credit needed. You're pretty just finding buyers and sellers all day long and just connecting the dots. Cool. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that. And I appreciate the explanation, Derek. So how are you guys marketing for deals in Philadelphia? How are you going? You're going after people who are trying to maybe maybe they're trying to sell their house. Maybe they're not trying to sell their house. Maybe they just the pain reached them at the right point in time. They got a lean from the city. They got some sort of pain and you guys call them. How do you get into the, the building of the relationship with the seller so that they trust you and that they understand you? And then how? And how do you overcome the, the wholesaling potential objection? Do you do double closes or how do you handle that? So uh, there's so many different ways to market the homeowners and, you know, get fine deals. Um, I've done every single way. You, I've wrapped my car before. I, I door knocked. I cold call. I text message. I put uh, the yellow letters. I did direct mail. I did door hangers. I've done I've done every single thing you could think of. The um, uh, just to make a long story short, the most successful ways I've had um, was cold calling. Obviously, cold calling is you're getting directly in the homeowner. That's always the best way. The second thing is text messaging. Text messaging works pretty well. And then also what's surprising is door hangers. So I would get a door hanger. That's just basically I'm, I'm looking to buy a house and hook it. And I would give it to the guy that just puts out, you know, circulars, pizza menus and things like that. I would give him a stack and give him $50. And every time you put a pizza menu in, he'll put a door hanger on the door as well. And hit the whole neighborhood just like that. And then um, next, my, my door hangers were yellow. So I would just drive around to give him two hours. I'll go back around. You see, see the whole block is just yellow and everybody's door knob. But the thing that really took it to the next level where our call, our callbacks doubled, I actually put um, a face on the door hanger. Instead of just saying, I buy houses, um, the girl, remember I said I had agents under me? One of the agents under me, uh, she was beautiful. So what I did was- I love how you think, man. I, you think a lot like me. I love how you think. It's very simple, but a lot of people don't, they overthink things. Pretty girls attract people. So, okay, exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. So I put, I, I asked her, I said, was it okay if I put you on the face of the door hanger? Um, put your business face, the face you have on a business card, put that on the door hanger. And, um, and I'll give you a piece every deal we close. She said, cool with me. So I literally put her face on the door hanger and, um, and I changed, uh, so we use a system called call rail. So when people yeah. call the automated yeah. answering system, phone system, I, I, I made her the voice on the call rail. So when people called, they called the call rail, they heard her voice. Everything was smooth. We literally doubled our deals from that. Just what was she, what's her name and what does she look like? Beautiful. I, I can't. Her name Adriana, but I can't. I can't really describe it. But and she has a beautiful. She's she's that bracelet, so she had like a beautiful smile. So it just like it just made everybody feel a little more warmer, I guess, about calling. I don't. I don't know what it did, but when I tell you when we put her face on the hangers, the calls were coming in. They were raining in. It was to the point where I answered the phone. I love this. Was, I love this tip. By the way, I absolutely love this tip because so many people aren't going to be bold enough to do it. And number two, aren't going to be able to pull it off because the reality is if you go and you look at like, hey, if you want to go to a busy restaurant, what do they have in common? They got good, uh, attractive bartenders and good, attractive people that are working in the restaurant. People want to talk to attractive people. They don't want and they might want. To, and so that that's makes sense. And then when they call you set you to make sure they're not calling a number and feeling like, oh, I got a wrong number. This is Derek, actually. You you yeah. you then 
uh, solidified that by making her answer the voicemail. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, it, it got so crazy where um, when we started, uh, you know how car ride works, they push you through the whole funnel, the flow yeah. and everything. And then when yeah. I answer the phone or call back, they're like, hey, I'm looking for looking for her. And I'm like, hey, I'm her assistant. You know, she's on another car. I can take, no, I'll wait for her. I'm like, <laughs> so those are some of the objections we had to go with, but it was easy. It was, I still liked it because deals were coming in. So some right. deals I had to make her really talk and like close the deal out because they wanted to talk to her. But some people, when they heard her assistant, they were fine with everything else. Yeah. And the main, biggest thing is you got the you got the phone call. The it's just an objection at that right. point. So if you get them, you got the interest level. If you can, you can overcome that objection. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Make sure you give us a five star review. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this podcast with a friend. And make sure that you schedule a call with me and my team. We have the Millionaire Mentorship program which is for newbie and advanced investors to get started investing in real estate and if you're listening to this podcast right now that's exactly what you want right you want to learn how to invest in real estate it's changed my life it can change your life and we have a program that'll help you get your first or next investment property within the next 90 days or i'll pay you a thousand dollars cash and you don't pay Guess what else we're launching? We're launching a fund, and if you're interested, I'll include a link in my bio to this fund where you can actually invest with me on a lot of the properties that we're in. In fact, I'm in one of my properties right now in downtown Kansas City in a building that I bought using my own money, but I started with just one property, and you can do the exact same thing that I did, but you gotta get started, you gotta take action. So whether you wanna invest with me in my fun or whether you wanna schedule a call with my team, both those links are in the bio. Enjoy the show, give us a five-star review. Um, you know, one thing that I dove into lately, Derek, or that I'm diving into as we're, we're restructuring our acquisitions, um, and so I appreciate all the stuff that you're sharing with us, is we're working on actually moving everything away from like call rail, everything like that, and we're going 100% all in on a new software called Go High Level. Are you familiar with that software? I, I have a call at two o'clock literally with a guy to set my go high level up no lie literally at two o'clock dude it's gonna blow he's your studying, he's studying my whole go high level we had a um i just had a uh um preliminary call with him last week he told me how much everything costs and everything we this is our setup call today yeah i can't tell you enough so what happened with me is we've been going through you know we moved out to kansas city from vegas had an acquisitions platform there where it was like very old school because everything has changed so quick and it was just my old way of doing things so i was constantly vetting new crms and through our coaching program i found this and i'm like wow this is i can blast text i can freaking uh dial seven and numbers at a time with the actual number from that area code that i'm calling from right it'll match them I can freaking set up funnel systems. I can do everything. I can do all of my mailing. I can build course content within this thing. I'm like, dude, this, and we know this, I can white label the software and sell it to people. Yeah. Like, I'm like, this thing has got nothing, but in fact, I'm going to their mastermind next week in Dallas, Texas. Cause I'm like, really? oh, oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm all in on the platform, all in. So uh, yeah. yeah, I know a guy that was killing, like literally killing them. He white labeled the cert, the white labeled the software four years ago, five, four or five years ago. And when I tell you he made so much money because it was new, nobody knew what this was. Right. He called it um, I forgot the name of the company he called it, but he made so much because it was so new. Now everybody knows about it. Everybody knows what the real company go high level, but back four or five years ago, he called it, let's say he called it go blue level. I, I don't know what he called it, but <laughs> He was, I'm telling you, he was making so much money because it was new and nobody knew. Every, I even thought that was his real company until we all found out. And I tell you, he was, oh my gosh, he was, he was making bank. But I now, now the, the cat's out the bag now. I just interviewed Dominic Baptist last week, who's the number one affiliate for Go High Level. Um, in fact, if you really? look, yeah, he's, and he makes $200,000. He's 26 or 20, I think 26 years old. And he's making two hundred thousand dollars a month selling affiliates softwares as a service on Go High Level, and I'm not even after it for that. I'm after it strictly for the solution, because the solution. But the fact that you know, for for me as, as somebody who teaches other people how to invest in real estate, you know, the constant thing they're asking is, "What CRM do I use?" And I'm like, "Well, we really don't have a good solution at this point in time because we don't like anything that we have." And so we're able to build out. Podio is cool, but you gotta have somebody build that out, though. All right. Yeah, yeah, Podio, Podio definitely. I mean, there's a lot of good ones that that get you 
but then you have to have this other bolt on. You have to have this Zapier. You have to have this, or you have to have like a click funnel. You have like 90 pieces of software, 90 subscriptions. And, yeah, and, and then this is a one and done. The true, the true one and done. In fact, you'll like this and you might be able to incorporate this in your business. In our, in our coaching, one of the things that we know works extremely well is MMS marketing, which is video marketing, right? So now on our, we have got this, this plugin through Go High Level. When someone books a call with us, they're going to get a video response back from me that I've already pre-done. And we were gonna do this the same thing with our, with our uh, acquisition clients, where it says, hey, Derek, Thanks for booking a call with me. We'll be on the call with you today. I'm super pumped up with it. And I recorded the video. We just left like a form, it's like a form, you know what form letter, it's like a form letter where I just go in and I say like a couple words that are gonna be changed out with whatever. And then that video automatically goes through and we send it out to our people. So it's a game changer, man. That's genius. Oh my gosh. I would put we her, just, I would put her video started. on too. I'd put her video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that's a game changer. You know, we just started, you know, uh, uh, Manny Chat? Yeah, hundred percent, yes. We just, we. I, I'm talking about as of last night, we just set up Manny Chat where Manny Chat sends out a video to people DM. We just, I mean, talking about 11 o'clock last night. So I'm about to see how it goes, but what you don't even thing? you don't even need many chat after you go go high level like that's another service like so we use i use many chat as well um and i currently do but we now we bolt it on to our funnel because you don't because go high level takes care of many chat like you don't even need it anymore um it's crazy yeah, it's, it. it's a and if you do use many chat like you're going to bolt it on to your go high level, meaning that like the last little uh, wave or whatever thing that you're gonna do is gonna be yeah. your go high level funnel. So it, it, it's 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 unbelievable, man. It's 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 really cool. That I'm glad that you're on the same journey that I am right now. So um, tell tell me a little bit more. How, like how many wholesale deals have you guys done? What are you guys trying to do? You said you're you you said you kind of flipped it right now where you're you're becoming more of an investor and then I kind of cut you off so let's go let's back let's go back to that yeah so we actually stopped we actually shut well not say shut down I pass it over our wholesale company what month was this this was the, earlier this year March March or April one of those months earlier this year I literally passed the wholesale company to my old partner and he just goes in and runs it um and now we just strictly invest and do the coaching I realized that it just was I had a moment where I was like, yo, I'm doing a lot. We're managing construction over here because I'm a GC. So any project, if a, before I took this car, I just did a home, a home Depot phone sale. Like any, nobody buys a screw without me knowing. Then we're doing wholesale, which that's a, a animal in itself. Everybody, full disclosure, wholesaling is an amazing business, but it's a high paying job. It's not like... This is not like y'all. I'm gonna just go and make a million dollars. No, it's work. It's work, no. but you can make good money without needing credit or a whole lot of money up front. Um, and then we're doing a coaching business, and then um, and then I have, a, and then my son, he's two years old now. So it just was like a lot. So I said I had to make a decision. Like one of these, I I really just had to cut off. Yeah. So I decided to cut the wholesaling off and just literally just pass it to my partner. So right now we just strictly invest. Um, right now over the last two years we. We own, like we sold houses and stuff, but right now we own um, third, 30, I think 36. Now um, we have a couple, we have a couple properties and under construction right now. And so right now I'm just gonna ramp that up. With this market right now, um, we're transitioning to doing more of smaller construction projects. Like I just finished up um, a house last month. It took us about like three weeks to do. And then we got another property that we're um, working on right now, which will be done uh before let's say before december like middle of november that's a flip and then we got another property we just picked up um that's a full gut renovation that's a full that's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars renovation but with this market the interest rate is so high i don't think it's a good time to uh get into anything that needs six months to a year worth of work like now we're jumping into more like, okay how can we what projects are 30 or less and we're getting in and out of those in and out of rules man you got you got a lot of good knowledge for being so young i mean that's advice i would give to i mean just having been through a downturn you know i was in 2008 2009 2010 2011 and 12 it's like 
Yeah, why are you gonna wait? Time is gonna kill you right now. Like you're not in the interest rate environment where you can like, probably before the interest rates would bail you out like on bad decisions and stuff like that. Now it's like you need to ultimately have a quick deal that you can get in and out of and that you can make your make your money on. So Derek, um, where do you see yourself? I mean, 35 properties is a lot of properties for somebody who's under the age of 30 years old and somebody who's over the age of 30 years old. Anybody at any point in time, that's a great situation. You didn't you didn't uh, plan your life to work out this this way, but it is. So, like, talk to us kind of a little bit about like where you see things headed for the next few years. Right now, I feel like I'm financially free. It's funny. Um, I had a conversation with someone. It was like, what's your dream life? I was like, me, just being able to go to the gym, play with my son when he gets out of school, and just, you know, have money coming in without me physically being there. And they were like, well, that's kind of what you have right now. And I'm like, dang, I didn't think about it like that. Like, like So <laughs> I'm saying to say a lot of us are really, really living our dream life right now. It's just we want to max it out a little bit more, you know? So let's say, for example, someone's here doing $10,000 a month. You live in freely how you are. Well, we want to max it out to $100,000 or a million dollars a month. So my honest my honest game plan is to set up to where we have enough uh, deals between flips and different things we have going on from there to like coaching and then other like investments. Like I started doing Forex a little bit um, where we got pretty much, to be honest with you, I want to have a million dollars coming in every single month. And like, that's it. And we're just buying properties and just building up cash flow and rental properties. Just, just keep adding on, keep adding on, keep adding on, keep adding on. So that's really, that's really my game plan, honestly. That's, yeah, I mean, there's nothing and wrong just work out, Just work out and drive a nice car every day. And I'm, I'm happy. What's your dream car? Uh, my dream car is a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. Okay. So you have a million. I have that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. So what are you driving right now? Uh, so I have a, um, a 2019 AMG GT63, and I have a, a Ford Not F1. Not a bad car. <laughs> yeah, I love, I, love my, I love my F-150. I love my truck. <laughs> so you got a truck and you got a Mercedes. Yeah, well, I have more than that, but yeah. <laughs> so that's that's your that's what you like. You like cars. Yeah, if I, um, I kind of grew up in a garage. My grandpa, uh, me and him... Me and him uh, basically lived in a garage and watched football. That's all we did was go. His uh, his best friend owned a, a mechanic shop. So after school, me and him would go there after school. And up until high school, when I'm high school, I started just doing whatever else. But um, and going to work and stuff. I worked at McDonald's in high school. Funny. But um, after right. school, all middle school, I literally just was at the mechanic shop every day. And me and him go to the uh, race car track on the weekends. So, like, I, I've been born in the car since I was born. I just, that's what I really love. Yeah, I haven't, you know, I didn't buy my first new car till I was 40. And, uh, really? Yeah, since then, like, now we're six years deep. I got, like, a car lot right now at my house. Oh, really? and, yeah, and I'm like, man, I'm ready to upgrade the upgrade. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm ready to level up. And I started looking the other day, and I was like, do I want to get a Ferrari? Or do I want to get a Porsche? Because I already have a Porsche, and I'm like, talking to my mother-in-law actually this morning and I'm like, do I want to get a Ferrari or a Porsche? And she's like, get a Porsche. And I was like, I lo- and I love the Porsche that I have, but I don't, I don't have, I want like a 911, right? I have a, a, a Macan, just a basic little, you know, buzz around town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so she's like, you know, the problem with Ferraris is nobody drives them really a lot and you like to drive a lot. And so I'm just curious, like, what do you like? Because I was leaning towards the McLaren. Um, what do you? My friend is. Yeah, I'm like, what, what's the best? Like you said, Lamborghini. I was looking at those too, but I'm like, man, I don't want to get a ten thousand dollar brake job. I don't care how much money I'm got. I don't want to. You man, know? man, the brakes on my car is a couple thousand. That crap is the the worst. Um, sidebar: the Ferrari might not be bad for the for the networking. Clearly, you know, podcasts and stuff like that. But the Ferrari is a good um networking piece because you know, um, not anybody can just get one. That's for one. And then the second piece, when they have reveals, they only reveal that out to individuals that are Ferrari owners. My friend has a Ferrari, so he goes out to the reveals every time they have one, like in New York or different places. He, he flies out and he's able to attend those. But the room is like elite, all high level players. 
So that might be good just to be able to get access to that. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, like even if you don't like the car, just to get access to the network, it's, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. Like I did, I did. That'd be more podcast uh, interviews. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. No, I'm liking what you're talking about. So your grandpa must be super proud of you. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a special relationship with my grandpa too. So I think we have that in common. My, in fact, just you said you have a baby boy. I got a, uh, I got a ten year old, and his middle name, his first name was supposed to be my grandpa's name, but my wife was like, no, because it's Wendell, and she's like, she's like, we're not naming our son Wendell, and and he's like, now he's you know ten, he's like, I wish you guys would have named me Wendell because it's Conrad Wendell. I'm like, well, you can go see Wendell, uh, like and ditch the first name, but like, I really, my my grandpa was a big inspiration for me as well. He was a hardworking dude, and so I I, I could appreciate. Um, you know, the relationship that you had with your uh, grandpa. I'm, I'm, I know mine, mine passed away before I had a lot of success, but I know he'd be really proud of me. I'm sure that yours is really proud of you, you and that's, that's awesome, man. Um, since we're running out a, a little bit low on time, I would like to, you to um, drop some game on uh, some young guys who are maybe listening to this right now. And, you know, they're making a lot of excuses. Let's be frank, like, hey man, I don't got the money. I don't, I'm busy. Um, I don't know what, how to get started. I don't know what to do. Um, you have just told us from 2017 in the last six years, you've basically made like four business adjustments. You went from realtor to wholesaler to investor to now coach and investor, and you're doing all these other things. So you're not making excuses. You, you're self, you're a self-made guy and you know, it's all about finding the solutions. What would you tell somebody who's listening right now who maybe is making excuses in their own mind why they can't do it. I want to give uh, I want to give three different things. So one, just start because the time is going to pass regardless. So for example, um, you may have a class. I might have a class. Somebody may see a class. Like one, me going to one class change everything for me. Um, but what I realize is, let's say the class is one hour. Whether you go to the class or not, the hour is going to pass. Right. No. Whether you so you might as well do something that you're going to get a return. I live and this is for this is for anybody. I live every day making sure I do at least one thing that my future self is going to thank me for. Like for example, this interview may open up opportunities where somebody else sees and they want to like who knows that now a year from now I'm like yo, hey Derek, thank you for getting on that that interview a year ago because it just opened up the door for that. Me and you may go ahead and buy a property or do a big business deal and it's like. Yo, thank you for, you know, doing that interview with him and building that relationship because now we're in a different position. So if people can just think about what can I do today that my future self is going to thank me for, I feel like that that changes everything. So um, because yeah. the time is going to pass by anyway, anybody, anyway. And then also for guys, um, people just getting started that I don't have a whole lot of money. I can't get started. The number one thing I tell people all the time is just learn how to find good deals. It doesn't cost anything to find good deals. The, the mass produced deals, yeah, you're going to need, you know, money for marketing and different things. But just to learn how to find good deals and analyze numbers, because a lot of individuals don't realize the, the power is in the person who holds the deal. So let's say you have a gazillion dollars, right? But you have no deals, no opportunities, nothing to buy. I have 20 great deals where the returns are insane. Who really has the real, the leverage here? Like you have the money but you have nothing to buy with. I have the deals. I can call anybody who wants to partner with me. You can't because you don't have nothing to offer besides just money. So now when you learn how to find good deals, you can do a couple of different things. Some lenders like here in Philadelphia, we have lenders that I work with, with if the deal fits under 65% LTV, they'll pay for the purchase and the construction. So there's no damn payment. You just pay. No damn payment. hundred percent all in financing as long as the deal's solid. Yep. They just got to pay the transfer tax and the origination fee. Um, that's for one. The second thing is, if let me ask you, if I had a deal where, hey, we're going to buy this deal for 50 grand, we're going to put 50 grand into it, but we're going to sell it for 300. Hey, do you want to partner with me? You, yeah. You'll say, yeah. All right. Look, the only the only caveat is that the down payment with the lender is 20 grand. You cover the 20, but I'll I'll put everything else together. My shoot, who cares? Now, that's a way for me to get in a deal with no money. Also, the other thing is when you you can always wholesale this. So when you learn how to find good deals, like the money just happens. One thousand percent. A thousand percent. People 
People who aren't listening to that, pause, rewind, listen to that again, because so many people don't understand, like, the, the real people, the real guys who get it, they know that it's all about the deal. It is all about, the money will find the deal. There's plenty of, there's plenty of money out there, and there's not a lot of deals. And so if you find the deals, the money will find. In fact, it's so funny. We're talking to one of my students right now that's in my program, and he's like, we, found, we helped him find a deal, which was on Zillow, at being sold by a, a guy on wholesale, a wholesaler on Zillow, right? And, and uh, this guy's, his, his trade's a construction guy, right? He's a construction guy. And so he ended up calling all the people that he knew, but it took him joining the program and me pointing out, connect this person to connect this person to do this. Like they have, the people have the resources. Sometimes they're just afraid to do the next step, like you said. And I think what Derek says is, is, is super important is like tomorrow's not guaranteed. And whatever you do today, whether it's like eating right or whether it's putting yourself in the right room or like I said, Derek and I may connect down the room. We're at a go high level event. We're like, holy crap, how's your thing going? How's that going? And like all of a sudden, you next thing you know, like we're doing business together. And it really does happen like that. And so it's super important that I think what I'm going to summarize here is like, you are excellent at building relationships and you're very open-minded. And I think that if you're trying to be successful in business, you need to be great at building relationships and you need to be open-minded and willing to talk to anybody. That's a fact. That's a fact. I literally, no lie, I literally made seven figures with someone that just DM'd me. Literally. Like one of my business, one of my business partners, he DM'd me and said, let's get on a, let's get on a call. And, um, uh, I'm not gonna lie. He had he DM me a second time, and then we finally got on a call. Next, thing you know, we started business. Like, no lie, from a DM, I didn't know from a can of paint. So you got to be open minded to hearing conversation from other individuals, and you got to be good at, at nurturing relationship because you you literally never know. Like like you and I may lead to eight figure business. Who like you never really know. So you got to be open minded, and you got to know how to nurture relationships because who knows? Like you might be the person that ha helps me. Get the Lamborghini event. Who who knows? Who knows? I hope I can have some impact on that for sure. Hundred yeah, percent. Like if like even if that's a five star review on this video that goes viral, and all of a sudden next thing you know, you attract more investors than you can know what to do with, and then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? We need to get Derek a Lamborghini. It's gonna make him way more successful. Get him get him to get him get him to make us money faster uh, in a fast car. Like I I totally appreciate what you're saying. I um. I did want to ask one more final question. Like, you know, with what you've got going on now and what you've already accomplished and you saying that you want to, you know, just kind of elevate a little bit more. Um, how are you looking towards like with what's going on with the world and your son coming into this world? I mean, I'm a father, you're a father. It's a little bit scary out there right now with what's going on. Like, how are you navigating that as a father? Um, so with me, I just try to um, make sure my son so one of the things people do, they, they talk about generation wealth, just giving giving your kids a whole bunch of stuff. But if they don't know what to do or know how to maneuver or not at a mindset, it means nothing. They're going to lose everything. So me, I, I bring my son to houses while we fix up. You know, I put he sometimes if I if we had this at nighttime, he would have been sitting right here on the Zoom listening to this. Um, When I have classes, sometimes I bring him with me. When I do interviews, I bring him with me, Um, even though he's two. But he he's smart. You could tell he because. When I open up the laptop and I'm on a Zoom, I say, Daddy has to work. He said, okay, work. Like, he knows what's going on, but also, too, making him well-rounded. He does Spanish classes. He does – like, we're putting him in different environments. He goes to literally the top three, one of the top three daycares in Philadelphia. Like, we try to make sure he's well, well, well-rounded. And um, and and just, just, just overall, just making sure a solid individual – because you can't control what's going on in the world. You can't at all. But at least if you – Put your child in an environment and get them mentally ready. They know how to not go around things that they probably shouldn't be around. That's the way. That's the way I look at it. I think that's great, sound advice. Uh, a lot of stuff that I'm doing myself personally, and a lot of great advice out there. How can people follow your journey? How can people get a hold of you if they want coaching? Where can they find you? So you can follow me on Instagram, D S B O O N E. Um, that's my Instagram name. I'll have weekly free classes. Um, every Sunday or Monday, depending on the week, um, I have, we drop literally every single day, a 60 second to a two minute video, just giving out a free tip or free game. Um, so you just follow in and just, um, you're going to see something. If I'm having a class, I'm having an event, 
or if you're just looking just to get free information, just follow and then you'll see stuff that's going on. So um, just give me a follow. And then if you have any questions, you can shoot me a DM, either me or my assistant. We're checking those DMs. So you send me a message. We'll get right back to you. Man, I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your journey. If there's anything else you'd like to say, please, by all means, say it. For those of you guys watching, make sure you give uh, Derek a follow. Make sure you check him out. Make sure you get started in investing in real estate. And number one, take action. Like he said, tomorrow's not guaranteed. You know, try to do something one more step ahead today than it was going to help you out tomorrow. And please give Derek a five-star review. Share this podcast with a friend. We appreciate you, Derek, coming on spending your time with us. I know your time's super valuable and I look forward to meeting you in person. I'm, I'm, I'm out and about. Next time I'm in Philadelphia or wherever, I'll hit, I'll hit you up, I'll lock you in. So I appreciate you, man. No, I appreciate you. And I just want to give you, uh, you know, your flowers. I love what you're doing. I love, you know, you're just bringing people on that can just help provide information because a lot of individuals have conversations like this. You have conversations like this with individuals behind closed doors. But the fact that you want to bring this out to where other people can listen in is a game changer because someone may listen to this and they'll make $100,000 or a million dollars or multi-million dollars, build a relationship. Like who knows just off of just watching, not even just my interview, but someone else's interview. And it could be literally a game changer. I was talking, somebody bumped me in a restaurant the other day and he's like, yo, I was listening to your YouTube and it helped me close four deals. I quit my job. So you, you never know who's watching that can change your life. So you doing this, you know, you're making good impact in the world. I thank you for that. Yeah, man. And listen, shout out to us both working at fast food joints at a very young age, because listen, I heard you say McDonald's. I worked at Burger King. And I think that that is a lot like it, whatever you can do to put yourself ahead, like at a young age, go hustle up. Nobody wants to work these days. Don't don't let anybody stop you. Don't let age stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let a disability stop you. Don't let race stop you. Don't let anything stop you. You are, you can achieve what you want to achieve, right? Just don't make it excuses. Appreciate, appreciate that, man. We'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.